Hello viewers of my channel. I have already told you a lot about equipment with the Retevis trademark, various radios and antennas, and this time I will tell you about the Retevis RT97 repeater. This is a full-fledged duplex repeater, but made in a small size, like a mobile, you can say a portable device. But before I talk about what a Retevis RT97 repeater is, I will say a few words about what repeaters are in general, and what they are. In radio communications, a repeater is a device that receives a signal from the air and transmits it again to the air. A real full-fledged repeater receives a signal on the air on one frequency and transmits it again on the air on another frequency, at the same time as it receives, without introducing any delay into the signal. Such a repeater is called duplex. It contains one receiver and one transmitter. Everything that the receiver receives on its own frequency is broadcast by the transmitter on its own frequency. Accordingly, such a repeater must contain some kind of filtering device that allows the receiver to work with the transmitter turned on at the same time. Most often, the receiver and transmitter operate in the same frequency band, with some slight spacing, and the filter should ensure that the receiver works so that the transmitter does not interfere with it. Well, in fact, the receiver itself must be with fairly good characteristics in order to work in such conditions. There are also cross-band repeaters. In this case, the receiver receives a signal in one band, and the transmitter transmits in another band, and, accordingly, the filtering properties of some kind of duplex filter for such a repeater become much simpler, since the frequency spacing is very large. Sometimes it is even several times, for example, at 145 MHz reception, and at 430 transmission. Three times the frequency is different. And there are also parrot repeaters. This is a device that receives a signal at one frequency, writes it to memory, and then, when the signal ends, it plays it back from memory at the same frequency. The easiest way. So let's say, a repeater for the poor. It doesn't need any duplex filter, just one radio and a recorder that records and plays the sound. It is very inconvenient to use such a repeater, because so far everything that we are saying is on the air, the repeater is recording, and your correspondent cannot hear you at all. And then you hear yourself on the air. Everything that you said is repeated by the parrot, and all the other correspondents hear you. It turns out that the time for radio exchange is spent two times more. In general, this is inconvenient to use. Usually, such repeaters are used only by radio amateurs for some kind of experiments, for example, to leave such a repeater at home or somewhere, move away from it, check the connection, record how you can hear yourself. And in the rest of radio communications, especially in professional, only duplex repeaters are used. And so Retevis RT97, despite the fact that it is so small, and one can say mobile, even with a carrying handle, is a full-fledged duplex repeater. Moreover, it contains not only a repeater, receiver and transmitter, but also a duplex filter. What is this device, RT97 repeater? Here is a box in a metal case with ribs. Fins are needed both as stiffeners and as radiator fins for cooling. It doesn't get very hot though. It has two connectors. Antenna connector. One antenna. It is an antenna and receiving and transmitting at the same time. And a connector for connecting the power supply. Connector GX164 pin. This repeater can be powered by anything from 12 to 24 volts. It has a built-in voltage converter, a stabilizer that allows it to operate from any of these voltages. Included with this repeater is such a power supply for power supply from a 220 volt network, respectively, having the same GX16 connector. Therefore, by purchasing such a repeater, you can immediately connect it to the AC and use it. When using it in a car, you can use such an adapter for powering from the car's cigarette lighter. Or you can make your own cable with a GX16 connector and apply any voltage from a 12 volts or 24V battery to it. There are several options for sale, several modifications, of such a repeater. On the VHF band, on the UHF band with some channels pre-programmed, or with channels programmed at the user's choice. That is, there are several options. You can order the frequencies you need and they will be programmed into the receiver and transmitter, and a duplex filter will be adjusted for these frequencies, which is important. Or you can buy a ready-made repeater with ready-made frequencies, if they suit you.
The memory of this device stores information about 16 channels. There are two buttons on the front panel to switch channels. You simply switch the channel number and each channel corresponds to a receiving frequency and a transmitting frequency. The display here on the front panel shows both frequencies at the same time. Also, each channel also corresponds to a receiver subpoint and a transmitter subpoint. All these parameters can be changed using software, which is freely available on the Retevis website. The repeater may also come with such a USB programming cable. One end is connected to USB, the other end, respectively, also has a GX16 connector. It connects to a repeater instead of a power source. With this connection, the repeater of course does not work. Only the processor is powered from 5 volts USB in order to program channel frequency settings and other parameters in it. The output power of the transmitter is 10 watts declared. The transmitter itself has 10 watts, and a little of this power is lost in the duplex filter. With the help of the software, you can change the frequencies of all 16 channels, the frequency of receiving and transmitting each channel, the subtone of the reception subtone of the transmission, whether to turn on full or reduced power. Full once again I repeat 10 watts, reduced, respectively, about 1 watt. And you can also change other parameters, for example, the duration of the so-called tail. That is, when the squelch in the repeater is closed, the transmitter emits the carrier for some more time. Accordingly, this parameter can be changed. You can change the squelch threshold and a few other less important parameters. It is very important to understand that if you reprogram both the receiver and transmitter frequencies of this repeater, then you need to adjust the duplex filter, which is located inside the case of this repeater, in accordance with these frequencies. It is very important that the duplex filter is tuned exactly to your frequencies, otherwise this repeater will not work at all. That is, if you have purchased such a repeater and what frequencies have already been recorded in it, a duplex filter is configured for them, then you can change the frequencies only within small limits, a few tens or hundreds of kilohertz, but no more. Since the duplex filter is quite narrow band, I will now contact the handheld radio through this repeater with a person who will also work as a handheld radio. A DA3200 disc cone on the roof of a building is connected to the repeater as an antenna. The power supply is standard complete. 12345R3TAJB here RA3TLB repeater ping, can you hear me? Over. RA3TLB. R3TAJB can hear you perfectly through the repeater, nine points. Yes, I can hear you too. I'm with the FT-70, a portable radio with a frequency shift. What radio do you have? I have a Baofeng 1701 now and the power output is the lowest. Yes, I also have a minimum power. It's okay to hear you. Okay, thank you. While on duty. Here's a man even contacted the Chinese radio. There are no more controls on the case of this repeater. There are only two buttons, up and down, that switch channels. The channel number you choose is, of course, remembered when the power supply is turned off. Also, each of these buttons can be pressed and held, and then they will turn on the second function. The button located on the right has the second function of blocking these same buttons. If we press and hold it, the key symbol will light up and the buttons will stop being pressed, by chance we will not knock down the channel number. The lock is turned off in the same way, press and hold this button again. If we press and hold the left button, the indicator will display the receive subtone and the transmit subtone corresponding to the currently selected channel. That is, it's just a view of which subtones are included. Let me remind you that the receive and transmit frequencies are displayed just like that when you select the channel number, you don't need to press anything, but you can immediately see what frequencies. There are no other controls, not even a power switch. If power is supplied, 
tied to the GX16 input connector, then the repeater works immediately. It immediately performs the function of a relay. Nothing needs to be configured in it. Nothing needs to be turned on. When power is applied, it immediately works. On the case there is such a carrying handle, in the form of a strap. In general, it is convenient that it is there, since there are no other handles on the case, and you need to take it for something to carry it. He weighs 2 kilograms. It's certainly not much, but it's a lot. Made entirely of metal. The metal body is very durable. I'm pretty sure that if I put him on the ground and step on my foot, he won't get anything. If I do not jump on the display and buttons, the case will definitely hold up. You can consider it as a mobile device, use it on some long trip to the fields, in a field camp, or at some kind of picnic. You can also use it permanently by installing it somewhere and connecting a mains power supply to it. You can mount it on a tree or on a pole, and install the antenna directly on the connector itself on the repeater. Since the repeater case is quite durable and dust and moisture resistant, there is a rubber seal around the perimeter of the case. And there is a second sealing gasket in order to provide electrical contact between the halves of the housing. Of course, this case is not completely sealed, and should not be immersed in the water or it should not be left to work for a long time in the rain either. But for some short time, during the event, you can even use it outdoors, I think that nothing will happen to it even during a light rain. But if you are setting it up for permanent work somewhere, for a long time, for many days and months or years, then of course you need to place it in some kind of closed closet or indoors. Complete with the repeater there is such an instruction in English, which describes all the main parameters and capabilities of this repeater. But in general, it is not difficult to deal with it. The main thing to understand is that there is an input frequency, that is, the frequency to which the repeater receives, and the output frequency to which the repeater transmits. In general, when repeater frequencies are recorded in some message, in some document or on a page on the internet, it is customary to designate the input and output frequencies, or the frequency of reception and transmission in relation to the repeater. That is, if the receiving frequency is 435 MHz and the transmitting frequency is 440, then the receiving frequency is the one to which the repeater receives. If you record these frequencies into your radio, then you need to record the receiving frequency into the transmission frequency in the radio, since the receiving and transmitting frequencies of the repeaters, of course, are meant in relation to the repeater. The body of this repeater opens like a book. This upper part of the case opens on hinges, on a hinge, and we see with you what is inside. In order to do this, you need to unscrew four fairly large screws with a hex screwdriver. What do we see inside this repeater? Most of the body is occupied by a duplex filter. And this is not surprising. The duplex filter is a big thing. In this case, this is a 430 MHz filter. My version of the repeater is 430 MHz, and accordingly, I recorded the frequencies at the bottom and at the top of the amateur band. The duplex filter consists of six cans, that is, a combination of a receiving and transmitting filter. Three resonators for reception, three resonators for transmission. All these resonators work like notches, that is, this is not a band pass filter, but a rejector filter. Accordingly, those three resonators that work for the receiver, they attenuate the signal as much as possible at the frequency of their own transmitter, that is, they are a rejector filter for the transmitter, and those three resonators that work for the transmitter, they attenuate the signal at the frequency of the receiver as much as possible. What is it for? In order that if the transmitter transmits some spurious noise signals at the frequency of the receiver, then they should attenuate them as much as possible. The frequency response of the filter is as follows. On the analyzer, respectively, you can see one half and the other, and the receiving and transmitting. It can be seen that this filter has quite noticeable attenuation in the passband, on the order of two and a half decibels, and, accordingly, a very large attenuation in the stop band. What else is inside the repeater? We observe a control board with two buttons and a display. Here it is on the top cover. A cable goes from it, respectively, already to the main part of the repeater. There is a small power supply board, which is located immediately next to the input connector, with a power connector. 
it can be seen that a pulse converter is located on it. It is not for nothing that the repeater has such a wide range of supply voltages from 12 to 24 volts. I think that this stabilizer generates some kind of voltage, for example 8 or 9 volts, and the whole circuit is already powered from it. And accordingly, the stabilization mode is such that it is possible to supply 12 and 15 and 20 volts. Also here you can see a metal case completely closed, in which the transceiver itself is located. It has two SMA connectors, reception, and transmission, which are connected to a duplex filter. In general, there is nothing else here. There are very few components inside the repeater, but everything is done very well, I would say. The case is very durable, the duplex filter is small of course, but still it is a real duplex filter made on helical resonators. And the transceiver itself is in a metal case, inside of which there is a printed circuit board. Unfortunately, there are very few components on the outside of this board, there is only a controller chip and a power amplifier transistor. The rest of all the elements are located on the reverse side, which we cannot see by simply removing the metal screen from this module. Judging by the size of this board, by the number of components, I think that the receiver, of course, is not a superheterodyne here, but is made on a single microcircuit. But since this repeater works well with a small duplex filter, and its own transmitter does not interfere with its own receiver, there is hope that the microcircuit is not as bad as in most portable cheap Chinese radios. This repeater is designed to relay only analog signals, that is, it is not designed to work with digital signals. For some reason, here on the metal case there is such an inscription line amplifier, which has nothing to do with the repeater. Either this case is universal, and is also used for some kind of linear amplifiers, but in this case it is used for a repeater. There are plugs here that cover the holes in which some other connectors can be installed, so it is quite possible that this case is universal. Well, or just someone does not know what this inscription means. I like that this repeater is made exactly as a mobile device, and not as a stationary one. Firstly, the case is very strongly protected from some external influences, not only from dust and moisture, but also from mechanical influences. I am almost sure that if I put this repeater unit somewhere in a bag with other things or in the trunk of a car, then nothing will happen to it, the maximum that will be some scratches on the paint, which, in general, it does not affect its performance in any way. And it is convenient to use it in the field, as a temporary repeater for work during events that take place in the fields for a limited time. It is convenient that it consumes very little in the receive mode. Its current consumption is 70 milliamps in standby mode, when there is no retransmission, when the repeater is waiting for the signal to appear on the air. And so you can use it powered by some kind of battery, or high capacity batteries, or batteries that are recharged, for example, from solar panels. The repeater is just convenient for mobile use. In transmit mode, it consumes about 2.5 amperes from a voltage of 12 volts. When powered by a voltage of 24 volts, the currents will correspondingly be less. Of course, you can successfully use it as a stationary repeater, placing, for example, in the attic of a building or on the roof in a protected closed box, which would provide moisture protection, but nothing more, since the body of this repeater is already sufficiently protected and you can use it in the fields. I think that during some of my trips to the fields I will check its work in the field. But that will be another time, and you will learn about it in another video. A link to a page with information about this repeater is in the description of the video. You can also purchase such a repeater using the same link. Once again, I draw your attention to the fact that when buying such a repeater, be sure to decide on the frequency band, and either order the repeater to be tuned to the frequencies you need, or choose a ready-made option, but with the frequencies that suit you, because if the frequencies do not suit you, then repeater that has already been delivered to you in the package, then later, in order to change frequencies, in addition to downloading software and reprogramming these frequencies, you will also need to adjust the duplex filter inside this repeater. And to set up the filter, you need special equipment, you will never set it up just by ear. You need a frequency response meter or some kind of RF network analyzer. This concludes my story about the small-sized mobile duplex repeater Retevis RT97.
Thanks for watching this video. Use various radio communication systems. Be aware that the repeater greatly improves the quality of communication in your radio network. It allows any mobile correspondent to hear any other mobile correspondent. If you have 10 mobile radios, no matter car or portable, and one base, then usually one portable radio cannot hear the other or can hear very poorly. Only the bass hears them all well and they all hear the bass well. When using a full duplex repeater, the connection will be the same between almost all correspondents, everyone will always hear the repeater. If someone gets to the repeater, then all other correspondents of your network can already hear it accordingly. It is very comfortable. Alexei Igonin was here, subscribe to my channel. Also, my channel is also on Yandex Zen and Rutub. Bye everyone.